Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Well, this is lecture 29 of basic calculus 1. In the last one or two lectures, we had covered the fundamental theorem of integral calculus or we just say fundamental theorem of calculus and then some of its application to problems. So, today we will be discussing rule of substitution which greatly simplifies our work while doing integration of some functions. We will see how does it go. So, first thing is uh, rule of substitution does not come out of the blue, it comes from the chain rule for derivatives. So, recall that the chain rule says if you have a composite function like g of f of x, then suppose I write that as g for simplification. So, dg over dx will be equal to dg over df times df over dx when you take the derivatives that is what the chain rule for derivative says. Now, if you write in the prime notation it will be g prime of f of x into f prime x equal to the composite function g o f prime. Okay. So, now we translate that into integrals. You will look at the integral suppose it is in the form the integrand the function to be integrated is called integrand sometimes. So, in this integral for example, you have integral a to b g of f x f prime x dx. So, integral a to b and dx this is our notation for integral the integrand is the other one that is g of f of x into f prime x. So, that is our function now to be integrated. Now, when you write g of f of x into f prime x, so it looks like uh, the earlier chain rule we want to see how the chain rule is applied. So, it will be something like your if you go to d g by d x equal to d g by d f into d f by d x. So, that should be equal to g of u prime right that is how it would look. So, it would translate to if u equal to f x these are all necessary condition we need to put this uh, composition work. Let u equal to f of x be continuously differentiable on the closed interval f. So, its range automatically is a closed interval right it is a continuously differentiable function. So, once it is continuous its range will also become a closed bounded interval. So, call that range as the interval i. Now, suppose g is also continuous on i. So, that means you have f that takes a b to i and then i is taken to r by g. So, your composite function g o f is defined from a b to r. Now, it says what happens to a b integral in terms of g of u fine. So, that we can just write g of u instead of u you can think of uh, let us look at the second one that will be easier to see indefinite integral g of f of x is the composite function times f prime x dx. So, that is same thing as g of u du where this u is really an abbreviation for f of x. Okay. So, that means we are concerned about the function g integrate g of u it is same thing as telling write g of f of x and f prime x dx. Now, in terms of the definite integral when you have the limits in the first left side you have the limits for x as a to b 
on the right side you have limits for u which is f of x which are f of a to f of b that is how they are related to the chain rule. We will see throughout the proof how it goes why chain rule is used there it, it will be obvious from the proof. Okay. So, let us try to prove this we have g of u. So, remember g is from i to r we are writing g of u u belongs to i and we have f from a b to i that is how it is. So, now g of u is also continuous. So, let us write g prime u equal to g of u it can be integrated right it is continuous on, an, on a closed boundary interval. So, we can write that as g prime of u it is a primitive it or it is called the antiderivative of g it is antiderivative exit. So, call it capital G. So, that means g capital G prime of u equal to small g of u. Okay. So, once you apply the chain rule it gives capital D g by d of x equal to d g by d u into d u by d x and d g by d u which is g prime u that is equal to g of u and then d u by d x because u equal to f of x. So, that is f prime x. So, that is how we obtain g of f of x into f prime x which is equal to d g by d x fine. So, then you use fundamental theorem of calculus because integral of d g d x that is what is here integral of d g d x will be equal to integral of g of f x into f prime x. Now, d g by d x we can write d g of f of x by d x which is same thing as g of f x evaluated at a and b right because it is derivative it is integral of the derivative equal to that function. So, you get g of f x evaluated at a and b and that we can again write g of f of b minus g of f of a. So, which also we could have written g of u where u is from u is from f a to u is from f of b and we can again rewrite that integral f a to f b d g by d u d u again it is d g by d u which is equal to g of u. So, we write f of a to f of b g of u d u it is really variable of integration is u. So, it means f of a means u equal to f of a to u equal to f of b. So, that is what our first thing to be proved integral a to b g of f of x f prime x dx equal to integral f a to f b g of u du. Okay, this is in the in terms of definite integrals. Now, similarly in the indefinite integral also it will happen, but now let us see u is equal to f of x. So, we can see that how the limits are coming in an alternative way u equal to f of x. So, when x equal to a u will be equal to f of a and when x equal to b u equal to f of b. So, directly you can see that by taking the indefinite integral we get integral g of f x f prime x equal to integral of g u du. But again this one we can really take it as a rule and make a simplification instead of going through this composition and all the others. So, we now look at that in a different way the same thing, but considering the differential. So, suppose u equal to f of x that is what we have taken there. Now, its differential is d u equal to f prime x d x. Then in the indefinite integral g of u d u you think of g of u which is g of f of x and then what about d u? d u is f prime x d x. So, you just substitute that here. So, it looks because of this d x in our notation this is really going through very well. See this looks trivial why we are so concerned about it, but you think of this d x as if something like it is integral in say phi of x d x that is our notation, but it means integrate phi over x or phi of x with respect to x. So, instead of d x suppose we had with respect to x we would have given this notation in the beginning then this does not seem to be very obvious it requires a proof. But after proving it we find 
that if you consider the differential this f prime x is nothing but f prime x. So, it looks something like in the new one f prime x with respect to x will be equal to uh, with respect to u. So, instead of writing this with respect to integral and so on, we would say that this is really the differential. If you take this to be differential, this is also differential of u as our rule says. That is why we can really substitute. We just find out say u equal to f of x we substitute. Then you get f prime x dx the differential as du. So, that is g of f of x becomes g of u, u prime dx and which is the correct one? That gives now g u u prime dx as a differential u prime dx is du. So, you get directly whatever we have proved in the theorem. So, see that our notation instead of writing with respect to x since we have written dx that notation is really helping us now. And this notation is consistent with the chain rule or the rule of substitution that is why this is called rule of substitution which is in disguise the chain rule for differentiation. So, see that this notation really helps and we can treat that dx in the integral as the correct or as the actual differential. Okay. So, since we are able to consider that as the differential now g u d u if you substitute u equal to f of x that gives rise to the left hand side because the differential d u becomes f prime x d x. That is why of course, this notation was given and because these things are consistently going through the differentials we make it a rule it is a mnemonic instead of using the theorem in that form always this will be a convenient form which we call as rule of substitution. Okay. So, what do we have to do really? If we find somehow that some functions in the integrand will be simplified if I substitute u equal to f of x then we substitute and see that when x equal to a for the limit of integration u becomes f of a when x equal to b u equal to f of b and in that case du is also equal to f prime x dx. So, in the integral a to b g of f x f prime x if we go on substituting whatever we have seen we directly get our result fine. So, this is just a magic of the notation so to say, but we can use this as a mnemonic and continue with our integration. Let us see an example how it is applied rule of substitution. So, you see here we have to evaluate minus 1 to 1 3 x square square root of 1 plus x cube d x. Now, it looks difficult to do because we know only polynomials and are x to the power something and so on nothing more. But here what happens 3 x square d x is really derivative of x cube or the differential of x cube equal to 3 x square d x right d x cubed by d x equal to 3 x square. So, now the differential is like this also it is square root of 1 plus x square 1 plus x cubed. So, derivative of 1 is also 0. So, instead of x cubed we could have considered d of 1 plus x cubed fine. So, 3 x square d x can be thought of as d of 1 plus x cubed. So, it looks if we substitute u equal to 1 plus x cubed and apply the rule of substitution that would help us to integrate. Okay. So, let us try that substitute u equal to 1 plus x cubed with that substitution the differential d u becomes 3 x square d x and we have to be concerned about the limits when x equal to minus 1 substitute in u. So, u becomes 1 minus 1 which is 0 and when x equal to 1 substitute here it is 1 plus 1 equal to 2. So, the integral integral minus 1 to 1 3 x square this can be written as now integral in u which is square root of u and the other one is d u 3 x square d x that is d u and the limits now become in u they are 0 and 2. So, it is 0 to 2 square root of u d u. Now, this will be easy to integrate we know exactly its integration it will be uh, u to the power half plus 1 divided by half plus 1 
or that is 2 by 3 into u to the power 3 by 2 evaluated at 0 and 2. So, that simplifies to 4 times root 2 divided by 3. This is how the rule of substitution is used. So, sometimes when you get experienced, we will simply start like this, it will be equal to integral. Now, 3 x square dx is really d of x cubed or d of 1 plus x cubed. So, you write 1 plus x cubed and d of square uh, not square root 1 plus x cubed. Then integral will be minus 1 to 1 or if you go through the indefinite integral, it will go through that will give you uh, really 2 by 3, it is as if it is u and then 1 plus x cubed to the power 3 by 2. This has to be evaluated now it is in x, we are not worried about u, it will be minus 1 to 1 and then that will simplify to 4 root 2 by 3. But do it after a after some time, not now. Substituting will be easier to see instead of going directly through that. Okay, let us go to next uh, thing, which is the indefinite integral. So now, if you go for the indefinite integral, it will not have any limits here. It will be three x square square root of one plus x cube dx, which is integral root u du and this plus c because indefinite integrals will introduce a constant. So, that will be 2 by 3 into 1 plus x cube to the power 3 by 2 plus c as we have seen fine. But we have to remember that in the indefinite integral there can be an arbitrary constant that is how the indefinite integral will look like. So, then if you know the indefinite integral from minus 1 to 1 when you integrate you just come to here and then evaluate it at minus 1 to 1 for x right x equal to minus 1 to x equal to 1. So, this is after a bit of experience immediately you can see even you do not need to put that u equal to 1 plus x cubed, but directly do it. So, then as we know it simplifies to 4 root 2 by 3. So, either way you can do it directly through that when x equal to minus 1 u equal to 0 changing the limits for u or find the integral in terms of x and substitute. Okay. So, let us take another example evaluate derivative of derivative with respect to x of integral 1 to x to the power 4 not x it is 1 to x to the power 4 sec t dt. So, sec t dt will be difficult to integrate right we do not have a formula had it been second square yes we could have done it it will be tan, but it is second t dt. So, maybe we have to use fundamental theorem, but fundamental theorem says that derivative that is d by d x of a to x, but it is x to the power 4. So, what we do? We can find out the chain rule. So, express this as d of d x fourth and then convert it to d d x. That is what we do here. We substitute e equal to x to the power 4 because that is where the trouble is and use the fundamental theorem. So, now d dx d by dx of 1 to x fourth second t equal to d u x fourth is that is u now. So, derivative of that is derivative of this with respect to u into derivative of u with respect to x fine. So, that is how it uh, looks now. So, that is equal to derivative with respect to u of integral 1 to u second t dt times derivative of u with respect to x. Now, here <coughs> we can use fundamental theorem. So, that gives out second of this variable that is u this a is gone is 0 derivative. So, second u that gives second u times du by dx u equal to x to the power 4. So, that gives 4 into x cubed. So, substitute u back you would get 4 x cubed into second of x to the power 4. So, you see we did not have to worry about what will be the this integral, but since the differentiation of an integral we could do it, but with rule of substitution. Okay. Let us go to next example. Here we have to evaluate phi divided by 4 to pi by 2 integral 
and cot theta cosec square theta d theta. So, it should strike something we have cot theta we have cosec square theta, but derivative of cot theta is minus cosec square theta. So, we can introduce a minus sign and substitute cot theta as something. So, that the differential cosec square theta, theta d theta will be minus d of u if u equal to cot theta. Okay. So, let us try suppose we substitute u equal to cot theta then you get the differential d u as minus cosec square theta d theta and look at the limits when theta is pi by 4 our u becomes cot of pi by 4 which is 1 and when theta equal to pi by 2 our u equal to cot of pi by 2 which is uh, 0 right. So, our limits will become from 1 to 0 that is the integral we can write as 1 to 0 cot theta which is u and differential is d u equal to minus cosec square d theta. So, cosec square d theta is minus 1 into d u. So, it is in the form u minus 1 into d u, but it is 1 to 0 limit. So, we can change that with this negative sign that will be 0 to 1 u d u. Now, this we can integrate it is u square by 2 and then you have limits at 0 to 1. So, at 0 it is 0, at 1 it is 1 by 2. So, it gives 1 by 2 that is the answer. So, see this is how we will be using the rule of substitution that will be more convenient than directly also doing, but sometimes if it is bigger expression we can see directly and then substitute appropriately. Substitution will minimize mistakes instead of doing directly. 